Okay, so I released a video the other day where I showed this quad ripping around these trees with an 850 milliamp hour 4S battery. Um, but the ESCs on here are actually rated for 6S, and so everybody wants to see it on 6S and see how it holds up, and I want to see that too. So I've got a 550 uh, milliamp hour 6S battery on here now. It's about the same size as that 850 4S, um, and I've done a few quick tests with it just to make sure that it flies. Um, the tune was off, but other than that, it was doing okay. But what I haven't done is I haven't pushed it hard. So today, I've got it on here again. I've got the throttle scaled to 70% on my radio um, because the point is not to go faster. It's already fast enough. Uh, the point is to see if it holds up and to see if uh, in doing that, we can pull less current than before. I just kind of took a guess at how to adjust the tune. I lowered the P's and D's and I lowered the uh, TPA uh, threshold a little bit. So we'll see how it does. Hopefully it's good enough to just get a good test out here. And this time I'm gonna push it pretty hard. Well, that was a pretty short flight. Uh, it was just like two minutes. Uh, but the important thing is it did survive. And I think part of the reason the flight was so short is because I was really pushing it hard. I was pushing it harder today than I was with the 4S battery. And in previous flights, I've gotten pretty similar flight time between the 550 6S with 70% throttle cut, uh, throttle scale, and the 850 4S. Those are about the same size, very similar in watt hours, and I was getting a similar amount of flight time, uh, which makes sense. So the cool thing about flying this on 6S is that it actually does take less current. Um, I've done a couple different punch outs. Uh, yesterday, I did a series of punch outs just to see. And this build on 4S uh, takes 60 something amps uh, with these props and everything on a full punch out. Um, that's on 4S. On 6S, it takes 40 something amps. And so that's kind of the numbers you would expect to see. And it's good to see on here because it means that we're actually working the battery less hard. It means that we're pumping less current through the connector, which makes the XT30 kind of okay. Um, before I was wondering if I might need an XT60, but 6S helps with that. And the board itself is not super thick. Um, so I don't know what the total current limit of this board is. The FETs are rated for 35 amps each. So normally that would mean that you could take four times 35. That would be the total current. But in this case, that would be 140 amps. And I really, really doubt if you could put 140 amps through uh, this PCB without overheating it. I mean, for that matter, it would uh, it would desolder your XT30 connector at that kind of amperage. And so uh, I don't know what the actual current limit is, but running on 6S, uh, if it continues to survive and that helps us run at lower current, that's only a good thing. I don't know if you could tell, but the tune was definitely not quite right. I was getting quite a bit of oscillation in the fast turns. I could certainly hear it, if nothing else. And so the tune will have to be uh, cleaned up a little bit. That's nothing surprising. 3,300 uh, kV is pretty high for 6S. 
um, and the throttle scale, it's not like that really uh, compensates for lower KV. But I think I'll be able to get that dialed in, and if so, uh, it should be pretty cool. I'm going to keep flying it. I'll let you know if uh, anything else develops on this, like if it catches fire later. Uh, but so far, so good. Happy flying.